From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Inside Politics. Hello, everyone. I'm News Channel 5's political analyst, Pat Nolan. Welcome to Inside Politics. American politics remains more gridlocked and divided than ever. The problem seems to be not just disagreements between the two major parties, but divisions between both the Republican in, inside their parties, between both Republicans and Democrats. Is now a real opportunity for, to, for a viable third party to emerge, or is the political process so institutionalized that's all but impossible? And among those inter-party disagreements, what party faction will likely to come out on top? And what will that mean for next year's midterm elections or the next contest for president in 2024? We have two of our best political analysts joining us to address those topics. They are Democrat Larry Woods and Republican Bill Phillips. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being on the program with us today. Glad to. Thank you. Uh, Bill, Republicans hope that history repeats itself and as the party out of power in the White House, they'll recapture both the Senate and the House in 2022. Do you like their chances? Well, I think they've got an excellent chance. And uh, what's interesting is when I talk with my Democrat friends, a lot of them are very concerned that uh, Republicans will manage to get a slim uh, majority next, next year, uh, probably in both houses. Larry, the midterm elections are usually a referendum on the sitting president. What's happening to Joe Biden since his botched decision to remove all American troops from Afghanistan? His job performance numbers in the polls have just been in free fall. Can he right the ship or will he carry the Democrats' hopes in 2022 right down the drain with him? I think President Biden will right the ship and help in the midterm elections. Bill's right, of course, historically, the incumbent president suffers in the midterm. But, you know, Biden had four of the presidents saying, yes, it's time to get out of Afghanistan. We've got to learn sooner or later not to try to win unwinnable wars. There's nothing for us to gain there in Afghanistan. It's unfortunate people get hurt. It's unavoidable when you're trying to end a war like Eisenhower did in Korea, like Reagan did when he pulled the Marines out of Lebanon. There's no easy way to do that. Bill, Republicans are always attacking President Biden as well about continued high inflation and about renewed problems of getting the COVID-19 pandemic under control. But can the Republicans keep the focus on the president as long as former President Donald Trump keeps trying to get involved, still seeking without any proof to say that the 2020 election should be overturned? Well, anyone who thinks that Donald Trump is going to step aside and uh, become a quiet former president is uh, dreaming. Uh, he is going to continue to be a distraction, and it is not helpful for any effort uh, that's going on to uh, criticize uh, the president and possibly uh, destabilize any progress he may make. So. Larry, in recent days, there's a poll out that shows that 60 percent of Republicans that they surveyed still think the 2020 election should be overturned. The results changed. Uh, President Trump last week even urged his voter, his supporters not to vote in the 2022 elections unless he gets a redo for 2020. While what he's proposing may seem a bit absurd, the former president does have quite a bit of support in the Republican Party. In fact, he made a similar plea like that to Georgia voters back in 2020, and two Democrats got elected to those Senate seats as well. Uh, might Mr. Trump be the best thing the Democrats have going right now, going into 2022? Absolutely. You know, Trump says, we all know, Trump's a different kind of person, different kind of politician, and he's making, what, eight, ten million dollars a month right now saying he's going to run and be active, etc. So he's going to keep talking about it. Uh, you know, uh, we need to all come together more. We need to all be more of we are United States, we are Americans, and not always be fighting on the other side. I think Trump's a distraction and a problem in that sense. Uh, and some of my Democrats in the past have been too. I'm not just picking on Trump. But we need to defend the Constitution, uphold our national interests, hope for the best. I, I'm surprised and fearful about if 60% really do think the election was rigged or whatever. Uh, I don't like to lose either, but I think Americans, Republicans and Democrats play fair 90% of the time, 90% of them. A uh, question for both of you on that same regard. There's been a story in Rolling Stone magazine this week that eight current GOP House members met and assisted with the planning, the planners and organizers of the January 6th takeover of the U.S. Capitol, which was trying to stop the 22 election results. One House member said he might even seek a blanket pardon for the rioters. If that report is true, 
What should the House do concerning their members that were involved? What should the Justice Department do in terms of continuing its probe with the January 6th insurrection? Bill, you first. <laughs> well, you're determined to make me sound more Democrat than Larry. Um, <laughs> sound however asking. you want to. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, if, if there is proof that they uh, helped conspire and to pull off that uprising on January 6th, they should be uh, thrown out of, the, out of office, uh, expelled from the Congress, and then the Justice Department should take a hard look at it and follow what should happen under the law. Bill, what's, um, Larry, what are your thoughts? Well, I agree with Bill. I, I think if Bill had gone a couple sentences further, I'd agree even more, and that is Let's focus on the infrastructure law getting passed in Congress. Focus on making sure our economy and our nation's doing well. Then, then when the House has got time, I think holding a hearing about anybody who committed an act of violence on January the 6th and anybody who helped them commit an act of violence, yes, we ought to find out everyone involved in that, give them a trial, have the Justice Department prosecuted. If they're guilty, great. If they're not guilty, great. We'll talk but about the January 6th is important. We'll talk about the infrastructure bills later in the program. But Bill, Mr. Trump is also endorsing candidates in the 2022 Republican primaries for both the House and the Senate. His candidates might win some of those contests. If he does in some of those primaries, could that divide the GOP going into the fall campaign if he's sort of got two different sets of candidates? Well, the GOP is already divided, uh, as is the Democrat Party, uh, and we're, the, the two parties are going through a time of testing their institutions. Uh, but Mr. Trump has had mixed uh, uh, success on endorsements recently. Uh, I think some of those candidates will win with or without his endorsements and some will lose with or without his endorsement. We're talking about what's going on with the two political parties with Democrat Larry Woods and Republican Bill Phillips. Back to continue our conversation with those two analysts after you watch these messages.